Behind the drama of tomorrow's atomic power plants and behind the glamour of today's atomic laboratories is the harsh reality of the atomic manufacturing plant. In the plant, yesterday's traditions of enterprise and industrial skill are today making atomic products. Tomorrow is in production. 800 people work at the headquarters of the General Electric Atomic Power Equipment Department at San Jose, California. And 25 miles to the northeast, at the department's Vallecitos Atomic Laboratory, another 200 work on applied research and development programs. San Jose is the center for the department's engineering and design activities and for development work on many kinds of products and components as well as for the actual manufacturing of atomic hardware and fuel. All of these activities, including the Vallecitos Atomic Laboratory, are organized into an established and operating business, occupying in the San Jose plant alone some 200,000 square feet of floor space on a 57-acre site. The plant has facilities and equipment for assembly and fabrication of reactor cores, instrumentation, and other components for all types of reactors. In part, it is a manufacturing facility, as are other factories, but with a difference. For example, a skilled operator making a fusion weld is making it on a control rod drive assembly for the Dresden nuclear power station. A second operator is finishing a fuel element plate also for Dresden. A third on a jig borer is working on a control rod drive for a test reactor being supplied to Lockheed and the U.S. Air Force. And the fourth uses an aluminum filler arc to weld a shutter assembly for an open pool research reactor for Taiwan. Today's skilled workers, today's tools, today's methods. But these workers are manufacturing tomorrow. The difference is more apparent in the High Bay area where the products themselves look like tomorrow. A giant fuel handling mechanism constructed for the Enrico Fermi nuclear plant near Detroit, for instance, is 34 feet high and weighs 18,000 pounds. It will make possible the first near-automatic refueling of atomic reactors. By means of extremely accurate positioning mechanisms, this remote manipulator will replace fuel, breeder, and control elements in more than 600 cells in a honeycomb reactor core. This plant does much more, however, than manufacture hardware. In another building, the fabrication of fuel elements for tomorrow's nuclear power stations has already been reduced to a mechanized process. Fuel elements for the Dresden nuclear power station being built for the Commonwealth Edison Company and the nuclear power group are fabricated beginning with a uranium oxide powder. The powder is mixed with a binder, ball milled until it is uniformly blended and then fed to the presses where it is compressed into pellets at a rate of 300,000 pellets per month. After a close visual inspection, the pellets are sent along to the centering furnaces, where the binder is removed and the pellets are centered into very dense solids. And after another careful check and inspection, the finished pellets are ready to be loaded into the tubes which make up the completed fuel elements. Then the tubes are sealed and the segments are sent on to be given a complete series of quality tests. The autoclave in the corrosion testing area subjects each batch of segments to a 72-hour test at temperatures and pressures higher than those that they will have to withstand in the Dresden reactor. And only after this rigid testing 
are fuel rods assembled and packed for shipment. Another part of the same building turns out plate-type fuel elements for nuclear research and test reactors, such as those being built for shipment to Spain, Venezuela, and Taiwan. In this process, uranium is melted and alloyed with aluminum. Then it is entirely enclosed in aluminum and rolled into a single flat plate with the fuel completely sealed in its center. Continued quality improvement and progress toward ever higher fuel burn-ups is assured by a fuel development laboratory. The laboratory works to improve manufacturing processes. It provides process development and small lot fuel manufacturing for customers. And it complements the development work on fuel itself at Vallecitos. Fuel manufacturing and fuel development add up to a complete facility and business today to provide low-cost fuel for tomorrow's atomic electric power. The development of tomorrow's nuclear power is even more directly the purpose of yet another facility. One designed not to manufacture, but to test. The 86-foot-high structure houses a number of experimental and developmental facilities designed to support the department's various nuclear projects. On the outside of the building, for example, is testing equipment for control drive mechanisms for large power reactors. Among the facilities inside the test tower, a general purpose heat transfer and fluid flow test loop is being used to provide heat transfer, burnout, and hydraulic data for the Dresden reactor core. The test equipment is designed to operate up to 1500 PSI and is equipped to allow either forced or natural circulation tests and to obtain a wide range of flows and heat fluxes. Nearby, tests are proceeding on full-scale Dresden control drives and associated control rods with actual reactor water pressure and temperature conditions provided. The control drive facility is used both for development testing and for production performance testing and it will be used for the Pacific Gas and Electric Company's Humboldt Bay Plant and for other power reactors in the course of continued work on product improvement. The test tower also houses equipment for precise testing of hydraulic flow distribution of a flat plate fuel element of the type being made for the Lockheed test reactor. And the tower includes a reactor service test facility, which is essentially a 20,000-gallon water tank, 55 feet high and 8.5 feet in diameter. Operators working through 40 feet of water handle dummy elements in full-scale testing of equipment, designed to handle spent radioactive fuel elements of the Dresden power station. Like other facilities in the test tower, the service test facility is flexible and has been used for similar work on underwater handling equipment for other reactors. This is the General Electric Atomic Power Equipment Department headquarters at San Jose. 800 people, 200,000 square feet of floor space, an administrative facility, an engineering and design facility, a developmental facility. Together with its Vallecitos Atomic Laboratory, a full-scale, complete industrial center operating today, developing and manufacturing atomic products for tomorrow's nuclear power. Solid evidence of private enterprise earning its future in the development of a new industry.